friends, I'm Brian, and this is Gizmo Board Games. Today, I'm going to do a review of World Shapers, a game from Board and Dice. Uh, this is a card drafting game where you're also filling out your own tableau. Uh, so, we're going to, before the game starts, you will set out these elements of earth, fire, wind, and water. Go planet. Uh, there's two sets of these, so if you have four players, you can set out, you know, another another set in front of your other two players. But basically, each player is going to play on their own tableau. So myself here, uh, my opponent here. Unfortunately, this game doesn't have a solo mode, so I'm going to pretend <laughs> there is a second player there. Uh, I've already started the, the I've already started to deal out the cards. Um, I've removed cards that aren't involved in the two-player game. I've got a, little, a couple little pips in the corner that are kind of hard to see. Uh, I wish those pips were a little more bigger or, or maybe a number or just something to make it a little um, easier to figure out what to take out. Um, so that's, that's one of the strikes against it before I forget later uh, when I do my final review. But anyway, um, so we've removed the cards that wouldn't be involved in a two-player game. I've dealt six cards for the initial starting hand to each player and the three from the common pool. And this common pool will be the same, same throughout the game. So on, a, on each round, um, you're going to have the number of cards. Uh, it'll vary on number of players. Um, for a two-player game, it's always going to be six cards per round. But some of the player counts, it'll vary. Uh, you're going to look at your six cards. And simultaneously, all players will choose one of these cards to play in their tableau. Um, cards... Well, there are three options they can do. They can play it in their tableau under the matching icon. And as you see here, I've got one that is a wild card. So this could go under any tableau. But really, when this one gets played, it's going to activate. And it just says, choose a card from the player pool and add it to your collection um, without initiating its, its own its abilities. Um, so I could add this to any collection and then pull another card out from the player pool. So I'm probably going to want that, actually. That, that's probably going to be my card play. Um, so in this case, I would play that face down. My opponent would choose one to add to their tableau. And then once all players are ready, we'd flip and place it into the appropriate tableau. So in this case, they played a water one. And then the deck would pass around the table in the cor corresponding direction. Also, each player would start with Two of these power crystals, I forgot to, to get those out. I'm not going to worry about it for the Atoma. But now, let's see here, I've got a new hand that used to be on my opponent's hand. Um, so I will choose to show you a different action. I'm going to use this other wild card to show you another thing you can do on your turn. And that is to discard a card. And let's give my opponent that card. So uh, whenever he's ready, we'd flip. But I'm not going to flip. I'm going to discard. So I would keep mine face down. Just announce I'm discarding it while everybody else plays theirs. And when you discard a card, and you can only do it once per round, you get another power crystal. So now I've discarded this round. So this card is out of play. And I can't discard another card in this round. And then the hands would pass. Also on your turn, you can choose to play a power crystal. And power crystals go on specific spots on the card. Little power crystal icon, which if there's a power crystal on a card at the end of the game, it activates the en enhanced version of the card. Because all cards have an initial score cost or scoring number, along with other abilities that provide scoring chances, or in the case of this card, an instant action, which I, I did on my first turn. So maybe the, the, my opponent would play a power crystal there, thinking that they're going to um, get some good use out of those powers. Um, reading the card, they're not. But that doesn't matter. I'm not going to play through the full game anyway. So then we would have passed it around, and now we're down to four cards to choose from. And looking at the cards, maybe I want to focus on, because I've already played a wind card, Maybe I'm going to focus on air and earth. So I'm going to play this card here, which give me 
more points for a vicinity with air and earth because earth and air are in the vicinity of or next to the fire icon. That's going to be my card for this round. I'll just choose one of these at random. I haven't memorized them, so whatever. And then we'd be ready. I'm going to play my fire one there. And they're going to play on earth. So they're actually better set for what I'm trying to accomplish here. But that's just fine. And then I think I'm going to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and play my power crystal there. And try to get those bonus points at the end of the game. Then we pass it again. Now. I'm going to show you the last, the last thing you can do on your turn. So the first thing was obviously play it to your tableau where it goes. Or if it's a wild card where you want to put it. Discard it for a new power crystal. The final thing you can do is take the card, and as long as nobody else is trying to do the same thing, in this case, I want to exchange it with this specific card. As long as nobody else in the game is trying to get this specific card, I get that card. If we're fighting over the card, then nobody gets it. And the rules don't clarify what to do then. Um, so you, you might want to house rule that, or, or I, maybe I missed it. Maybe it is in there. Um, but it doesn't clarify what happens if two people want the same card. It just says if two people want the same card, nobody gets it. Um, so I've just assumed we just automatically go in the tableau. But anyway, in this case, nobody's fighting me. So I would just exchange with the player pool and play that into mine as if it had been in my hand. We would pass our final two cards around. And I don't care about water. And this one gives me points for water. So I'm just going to go with that air one. And they'll go with that one, sure. We play. They've got a second water. And I've got a second air. And then we would pass the last card. And then whenever we made their decision with it, because they could still exchange it or discard it if, if eligible to discard. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and play it. And we'll say that they want to discard and take a power crystal with theirs. That would be the end of the round. And then you'd start over again. You deal out six new cards to each player, and you you do that again, and then a third time. At the end of the third time, your tableau would be full, and these cards would be just discarded, whatever, doesn't matter. They're out of the way. Everything we discarded in the first round would have been discarded. And you just count up points based on the card's abilities. So your total number of error file symbols provide points, so maybe I have two here and two here, um, because your wild cards are going to count for whichever realm you played them in. So I would have two and two, so four total symbols, so in this case this card would give me three points, and then Vicinity with Earth and Air provides eight points because I enhanced it, etc. Um, and that's pretty much the game. Um, it plays really quick, and I'll get into my final thoughts. It does play fast. Um, in fact, it plays too fast um, in comparison to, to how long it takes to score. It's, it's a lot of math, and the scoring probably takes just as long as the playing, unless you've got somebody who's really um, stuck in, in trying to think through the best, you know, they're, they're stuck in that analysis paralysis. Um, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of math and a lot of work to uh, tabulate the final scoring. Um, that's going to be 100-ish of points, I think, when I played. Probably between 70 and 100 points uh, per player for three rounds of six cards. So, you know, 15, 18, 20 cards. It's going to be a lot a lot of math and a lot of figuring out if this card scores or not and that card scores or not. Um, so for that, for that regard, I'm not high on this game. I do enjoy enjoy playing it. It's my kind of game. You know, I enjoy hand management, deck building. Not so much deck building, but definitely hand management, tableau building, I guess is what I'm going for. Um, you know, and getting things that build off each other, a little, little bit of an engine, not, not really an engine builder per se, but a little bit of knowing what you've got in your tableau and what your opponent's got um, and are trying to go for. So that way you can best, you know, manage your score against theirs. Um, that would be another strike, I guess, against it too, is that it's hard to keep up with whatever he's doing when you play a four-player game. Um, and we've had someone just run away with it because we didn't realize everybody was caught in their own little world, literally, world shapers. Um, and, you know, not paying attention to that, that person's just racking up points because nobody cares about water. Um, so there's a little bit of that. 
as well. But as far as like a cheap, quick, easy playing game, this definitely fit the bill. Um, like I said, it's harder almost to do the math of scoring than it is to play. So with that said, um, it's, it's decent. I think I, I got this uh, really cheap on, on a sale, so I'm not disappointed at all um, in my copy of it, but I wouldn't recommend probably spending too much on it unless you really, really like the, the concept of world shaping um, and, and building your tableau. Yeah, it's, it's got the theme of world shaping, uh, world building, but the art, it's all right. Um, it, the theme, it's all right. You know, it's not bad. It's just good thoughts. You know, earth, fire, wind, water. Um, these, you know, you can put them anywhere when you set up the game. So you're going to have a little bit of variety. But not a lot. You're going to see the same cards over and over again as well. The cards are not the greatest, not the strongest, not... Not the weakest either. I don't know how much they're going to hold up, and they're 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 you know not standard card size, so you'd have to get the special sleeves, which I don't have right now for them either, to give them a little protection. But I'm not that concerned with it because I don't see myself playing it all that much, unless you know I just want a, a small, quick, you know, it, this is definitely a travel well type game, um, especially if you you know don't take the box even and just take the deck of cards in a baggie or whatever with some of the chips. It'll definitely travel well. So that's that's another positive on the side. And I'm pretty sure I gave this three out of five stars in my uh, my initial assessment of the game. Or around a seven on the Board Game Geek out of ten, maybe a six. I don't have my numbers in front of me, unfortunately. Uh, maybe I'll put a, a little note uh, in the comments when I go to edit this about what, what I actually scored it. But some, somewhere in that range, three, three out of five stars or six, seven-ish on BoardGameGeek.com, which puts it in a, it's an average game. It's an average game. It, it, it plays all right. Um, just a lot of trouble to score the game, I guess is the easiest way to say it. Like, I just wish it scored easier, but it kind of can't based on the nature of, of how it's going to score. You know, you, if you want the depth of, of the cards mattering, then the scoring is going to be a little... A little bit troublesome. Nothing that's not overcomable. So that's my final thoughts on uh, on World Shapers. If you can get it uh, on sale uh, for a, a really good price like I did, I would definitely pick it up again and I'm definitely planning on playing it again at some point. Um, but it's not something I'm going to pull off the shelf all the time. I've got plenty of other better uh, deck builder, tableau, card management you know, everything that this game has parts of. I've just got better on the shelf. But if I'm traveling somewhere or just want some kind of lighter, um, this definitely definitely hits the spot, at least for now, until I've kind of played it out just because of, there's not much variety um, to the cards in the end. So can't play it often, but I would keep playing it for sure. And that's, that's World Shapers from uh, Board and Dice. If you like what I have to offer, please hit the button, um, subscribe, tell your friends. Uh, hopefully I can keep providing content and reviews for you, and hopefully you keep coming back for more. Uh, that said, uh, thank you all for watching.